this video is a continuation of the web API one. Uh, in this video, we're going to use the web API that we have created previously and use that in our React app to do the CRUD operations. We need to create our React app. So first, what we have to do is let's go to our desktop. Now you need to use npx create react app command and uh, let's name our app as employee department app. So what this line does is it's going to create a template to begin our project. And besides that, it's going to install some dependencies. Let's say react, react DOM and some scripts that we are going to use. Let's and let's say in this script, for example, let's say npm start is going to start a app and things like that. So this single line is going to do that. So let's execute this command. So as you can see, it started executing, and this is going to take some time depending on your internet connection, uh, all that. Okay, so after this is installed, now let's go to our app, open it. Now we need to install some extra dependencies. And first is our React Router DOM. So what the React Router DOM is going to do, it's going to enable routing in our app. And after this, we also need NodeMon. So what NodeMon is going to do, it's going to automate the process of, let's say, we made some changes in our app. And before NodeMon, what we have to do is, we have to close our app and again, restart it manually using the NPM start. So it's going to automate that process. And along with this, we need Axios to call our APIs. You can also use Fetch, but I prefer Axios. So after this is done, let's see how our app starts and also how NodeMon works. So our app has started and now let's say I do some changes. 
here in the app for this i right now learn react now so here you can see what one did this process of compiling and now here you can see the changes detected so now let's start creating our app let's delete this extra junk Now we got it clean empty. Okay, so let's create a folder called component. So in our React, everything is component. So we need a file, so we need a folder. And inside the component folder, we are going to create another folder called simple and along with it a department folder because we have mainly a department and employee so we are going to do operations local operations in each sequence so in each of these folders let's create a javascript file and Remember to always capitalize the starting of that file because it's a React convention. So, an employee file and department file. And now we are going to use a snippet RCC to create a class component there. Now go the snippets from ES7. Yeah. Using this, you can download the snippets. So RCC for here and another React class component. Center. So this is control. This is control. And this is. Department. So here we have created this, and now let's include this in our app. We have included the employee. Let's include the department. So here you can see the components here. Now let's use Routing import browser router as a router routes and route from react router DOM. So let's wrap a main app component in our router and let's wrap our component in routes And now we need these element choosing the JSX expression and make okay. So now our components are in this route and now As soon as I make the URL path with the prefix of the local host 3000, I do employee. So we can see the employee component get rendered. And if I do 
department yeah. you can see the department get rendered so let's create a navigational component to navigate this by using let's say some click uh, so let's create a component name navigation.js and using the snippet we are going to use nav link for the navigation for slash employee and Name it as employees. I'm going to use a break. And again, one for department. <clears throat> now let's import this component in our main app. And Okay, so now it is enabled. So if I click this, it's going to show employee. If I click this, it's going to show department. So now let's go to our department and let's use our methods. Now I'm going to create a function name get list and what get list is going to do is it's going to use axios to call our api <clears throat> now for calling the api we need to use our url which is currently the localhost 5000 so to do that what we are going to do is we are going to create an environmental variable and it's going to get named as react app make sure this is exactly like this 
existing which work errors and things like that because it's a convention correct and after this you can name it whatever you like so it will be in my case it will be react app api and i'm going to name it as this and after this make sure you save it and manually restart the server and why is this because you need to do this to reflect this specific change after this is to be restarted now you can start using this and use that we need to use process dot mb dot the name of our api we have api and after this let's go to the partner controller and we need to use the get command see we use get we need to do after this api forward slash departments and after it is called you have to use then it's going to give some response and what we are going to do is we are going to just console log the response and if Throw some error. You need to cancel that. So, as we are using a class component, we have to use get mount. And every time it's going to get mounted, this component, the department component. We are going to call the get list function and let's also create a constructor use the props in case we are in that so after this currently this is useless but we need it in the future so now let's actually see if it's working or not so as soon as i click this you can see we got an array of department id 27 34 35 along with their names and if we see the development server this is exactly that so our git call is working properly now <clears throat> let's just display it in a more beautiful manner and let's create a table so we are getting the response perfectly so let's create a state in which we are going to save this this dot state and let's call this departments and it's going to be a list or array over call it And we are going to save the response in that. So, as you we have already seen, the response that we are getting
Got our state, and as you can see, the actual data. Yes, so using the response, we need to actually use dot data to access the array. So now, if I refresh the department, you can see the directly that we are getting. We need to save that. So, to use this, we need to set the state of the departments and that we need to get the response for data so we can just comment this section out and we are successfully saving this in our state and now using the state we are going to display that data so let's just create a table and for creating the table i'm using the bootstrap so npmi we have bootstrap bootstrap we can install the bootstrap and to actually notice to go to the bootstrap right and paste uh, <clears throat> this link in our index.html such as pages in the head so we can use it and after this, let's just wait. After the bootstrap is installed, let's create a table. And it is automatically going to be imported by the React bootstrap. And in this table, um, let's just create a head. And inside that, to have a row and in this row we are going to have some fields so as we can see here there's a department id and department name so what i'm going to do is create a department id department id and a department name. So 
Okay, you can see that. And along with this, let's also do a section for the delete and edit or update. So then we have another key. And now, after this, let's have a table body. And in this table body, what we are going to do is, as we already have this dot state dot departments, and in this, we already have a list. So this is going to be department so let's name it depth and what it is it's going to return is table row and this table row is going to contain data and what that data is going to be is Department dot department ID so it's going to display the department ID and the next one is going to show the name so here you can see the department IDs and names exactly in, as it is in the server. And now, along with this, we are going to have another field which is going to be for the update and delete. So, first, let's just create say delete. Or before that, let's create an add. In for adding another row. So after the table, have another div. So header, add the part. Our department looks really smaller. It's three. Our department. Now it's going to be a component. So let's create that component inside this department folder. So it's going to be add. And it's also going to be a class component. And it's going to be a form. And inside this form, it's also be a input field. And for now, let's just import this in our department so we can see it. So here you can see the box. Now inside this, it's going to be for inputting the department name. Make sure to make this exactly out of the server. And it's going to be a type of text. And besides this, we 
this component is also going to have a constructor props and our super props again it's going to have its own state named as apartment which is going to be empty and this input box is going to have a value of this state only this dot state dot apartment name and whenever we are going to write something in this the changes should also be selected here so if i try to type this box it's not going to show it because we are not handling the change so we are going to create a function change handler and it's going to receive some event and you can write this function also in this way Check handler handler and to receive an event and using this event we are going to update the state this dot set state and because we have or we already have the department name here so we can directly use that even dot target dot name and even dot target dot value so now if i try to type this because i have to include that change under function here in here also so on change i'm going to call this function and along with that i'm going to pass the event here and now if i try to type this okay it's still something like To change this to this. So if I type this now, we can see the change because we just fell. There is a small d here, and also we stated it is a small d. So now I need to create a submit button. button which is going to have submit same and along with that you apply submit and in the form on submit going to call a function here and that function name is going to be Submit handler, and I can also make this function look like this. One look like this, and another look like this, but they both for the same. In the submit handler. What I have to do is again I have to call the axis, and this time it's going to be a post. And again, process dot environment dot react app API along with let's say how are we using the post method here? So all you have to do call this and along with this. Have to pass the data to 
so our data is in the state form and we have to just give it the state so this method is passing the data to along with it the body so after this it's going to give us some response you can do whatever you want with that like this and it has the error and once you log the error so now we have also created the submit handler let's just call the function now submit the handler and pass the event along with it And now let's see if this is working or not. Person one. So you can see it's working perfectly now. And one thing, how do I get to know that I only have to pass only one field here? There was another department ID. So here you can see the post API. So you can see if I go to try it out, so you can see if I execute this. This was the response body here, and this was the request body, and in post action, post action, let's create. Send only one department name person person two and execute this. So again we are going to get a response here. This ID is uh, this ID is the primary key, so that's why. Automatically. So this we don't have to give because we have the identity in our key here in our model. We have already set the department ID as a key. So it also has the identity, so that's why it automatically increments at the time. We do something or add something 34, 35, and so on. And let's say we add another from person two and submit this. So let's say we have this. let's say person three it has person three. And now we have done the add operation. Now let's add the delete and update here. So I'm just going to copy this add department and let's create another the called delete department. Yes. Add this name delete department, and now in this case, here we have to include it delete department. 
now as we are using the map we have to use and specify we have to specify the id that we want to delete so for this component delete component we have to pass the department id and name as the prom so ID and pass the department dot department id and pass the name department dot department name and now we are receiving it as the prompt so because we have to review this we don't have to change anything and all we need is the submit button so we don't even need this input and let's change this to delete and in the submit matter we have to change the process of using next to the department controller is to read what we need is this along with the ID at the end. So looking backward forward slash yes and let's see what we need let's go to so we need to specify the id here and along with that what we need extra so we need the id so let's try to pass the id here and we also need the data state here and let's see this dot props dot id now let's try to read this So it is successfully deleting this. And don't even need this. We need to buy the ID and let's try to delete some more. Okay. So the delete is work perfectly fine. Now we need another one to update. So let's create another file. Edit department.js copy the add one copy this here change the name to edit now for this we need to pass Department. Okay, let's try to auto import this. Edit department. It has imported. We need ID. Department dot department ID along with the name that we need to edit dot department name. Receiving this here as a prop, and we also need this here to reflect the changes. The, for the updation, 
working link. We need the ID along with the schema that we need to pass. We need to pass the ID and the name. So here, yeah, let's see the document ID. Currently, it's nothing, but we know that uh, we are getting the ID from the props, so we can directly use them. So here, this dot props dot department ID, and the same case with the name. And here in the input, let's have a default value as the ones that we are getting from the props. Default value. And we have already set it same as a state one. So that's already sorted. And the only thing that we are changing in the update is the name. So we don't need to take care of the ID one. So now we need to change this post input. And along with that, we are already passing the state. And let's see what else is needed. We need the ID. So let's change this. Forward slash dollar along with this and this dot state dot department ID. And let's see anything else is needed. No. Now let's try to take this one too. Okay. The ID is 34 that we are updating. Submit. Okay. So this will be worked. Let's see why. This is the department name. Department name. Department ID. Captain. Okay. Mm.
Let's name the components to as partner ID and the department names because the error is exactly that. Now Now let's say we refresh. So this is now updating because you are passing rewards and all the operations are working perfectly. So let's say even. Rename it as previously ID and name. This is work exactly the same. Or this is updating perfectly. But now, as you can see here, that it is refreshing the page. So to resolve that, what we need to do is in the departments, we are using the get list to update this state. So what we can do is we can pass this function, this get list function, as a prop to the delete and update of one and even in the add department too so let's pass this function get list as a prop to each of it and let's name this as refresh and let's pass this function here Get this and we will use we need to use this and let's pass this to each of the function and the main purpose is to stop the refreshing of the page. Every time we are using the submit, we need to stop the refresh of it. So we can use the prevent default function, and after this, we can use this dot props dot get list dot props refresh. So it's going to call the function and it's switching this in the add to and in the delete. Refresh this
okay so as you can see now if i use delete To call this function after doing some operation. So, not here, but actually after this. So, now if I do something. If I do delete, so the page didn't refresh. Another delete didn't refresh. Add something. How to do? The submit. Okay, it took some time. But here you can see the change reflected here. So that was all the operations.